with that being said, I know that things kind of slowed down from what we've looked at the past few weeks <laughs> with the very... Kraken, but still some news uh, for our hockey team. Uh, by the way, if you have not seen it yet, uh, yes. I was able to interview Everett Fitzhugh, uh, Kraken Radio play-by-play -play broadcast for the first uh, African-American uh, full-time broadcaster in the NHL and the only, uh, I think, black broadcaster in any professional level uh, in North America for hockey. So go and check that out. It's on the Converge uh, YouTube channel. It's just a few videos down, I believe, or you can check out our playlist, Circling Shell Sports, here on Converge Media. Uh, with that being said, Bell, let's take a look at a few things that took place for our Kraken here over the past Yeah, week. they still remain a little bit active here. On the 26th, the team resigned forward Ryan Donato to a one-year, 1 $1.2 million AAV deal. Donato had a career year last season, posting 31 points in 74 games. A quote from... Ron Franz is here on Donato. Ryan elevated his game last season, and we're happy to have him return to the Kraken. And he completed a career year and will hopefully eclipse that in the 2022-23 season. On the 28th, the before I move on here, I mean, do you have anything to say in terms of his performance and yeah, this move? Donato, he's kind of a guy, how do I describe him? Kind of scrappy, you know, he's not yeah. like a big guy. He's not, I mean, he had 31 points this past season. He was a valuable contributor. Um, I know that they were avoiding arbitration with him because it, depending on so-and-so, it could give him more money than Seattle wanted to pay him. I had a few friends that wanted him to come back, and he did. You know, I think this is a good move. You just add more talent to your lines. I mean, with hockey, right, you've got four lines of guys that are always on the ice offensively. Yeah. Four, <laughs> four times three. So you're yes. going to need 12 forward centers, all that. Um, I don't think it hurts having them not on this roster at all. It's a one-year deal, and it's kind of like, okay, this was great. I need you to do it again or just or replicate better. success because <laughs> I, you don't want to see one year and say, okay, go ahead. Here's a longer-term deal. Yeah. So I think it's good. I think this adds, you know, continues to add depth. I don't want to say depth because Donato had a great impact, and he's not just a depth guy. Yeah. But you've got so much – not so much. You've got a lot of talent. Uh, on your forward group so i think it's it's good to see and i like seeing this get done i know this is something that i had a few friends that were like oh why didn't you sign him why not and then finally <laughs> it happened so i think they were just working through yeah. it but good to see donnie back moving on to the 28th here the team announces that kansas city mavericks will be the new echl affiliate for the team it's a multi-year affiliation that begins this upcoming 22 23 season so just like with the minor leagues in baseball right the, obviously the kraken <laughs> are the pro team the coachella valley firebirds are right below them and i believe from there it goes i think the hierarchy goes mavericks and echl firebirds and ahl and then kraken um, okay. in the nhl so it's just more areas for your team to develop right you know just more of your actual affiliate instead of having guys you know maybe like you last year you shared the uh uh charlotte checkers with the florida right. panthers you know just building your own uh your own uh development system effectively i believe is what's taking place here on the first the kraken were viewed as the 106th most valuable franchise in North America at 860 million. Which is the only thing I'll say is it's interesting to me that they were higher than the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Pittsburgh's been around oh. for a while. So just interesting to see Not where the, our, our teams yeah. stack up, you know. And moving on to some league news here on the 28th, it was announced that there will be new NHL jerseys after the 23-24 season as Adidas will no longer be the NHL supplier. Do we have word on what brand we're moving on with here yet? No. Safe bet, I would say, is Nike. Yeah. Baseball, that's Nike. Yeah. Football, Nike. Basketball, well, damn. Nike. <laughs> yeah, that's just how it is. Monopolies, you know, make things. You like to see that. But I know, you know, working in retail with the Kraken, we had issues just getting some of these from Adidas and the the jersey okay. was the hottest selling jersey in all of hockey. So I think the over time that relationship with the NHL might have deteriorated. And so we'll see. You know, CCM is a good hockey brand. Uh, I think Reebok's done some hockey, but I, you know, everything money, points to Nike. Money talks. Yeah. Right. Sure. And who's got the money to up, up there? So uh, that's what I would imagine. And that closes out our Kraken section. So we'll move on to the OL Reign. So we head over to our OL Reign here, who I believe last week it was quiet. They had yes. a week off. Yes. Due to, there was a clause that had been put into the CBA where they got a week off, you know, which it's, it's kind of fun to look at now because they had a game on Saturday and they play a game on Tuesday. 
Like that's so you take a week off and then you get to play it close, close few games. Anyway, uh, over the past week, the rain played down in uh, LA versus Angel City on the road. They would go down early. They would go down two to nothing early, but would mount a great comeback to win that game, three to two. Play the game defender Sofia Huerta. Where to one goal, one assist, three chances created, an 8.9 match rating. Where to had a great left footed shot to equalize the game late and uh, would assist on the game winning goal by Tobin Heath to give the rain the win. So I think the last two times that an NWSL team has come back from 2 0, it's been the rain. Uh, just fish like started both of those comebacks with the goal. So that's really, really, pretty cool. Um, Notable things from that match, though, uh, Tobin Heath notched her first NWSL goal since September of 2019, and head coach Laura Harvey notched her record-tying 81st regular season win in in history. Uh, it is the first road win of the season for the Reign, so this was a game that had a lot in it. I mean, you played down in, in L.A. Uh, I will say this. L.A. has a great atmosphere for their games. I mean, for an expansion club and, a, you know, it's great to see the atmosphere that they have set already in year one. And it's just you hope that more people see that and they want to go out to these games. Um, so that was, you know, even even rooting for the team that was on the road in that game, it was it was good to see that, you know, for the betterment of the women's game in general. Um, but as I mentioned, this was a comeback. This was big. You were down two to nothing um, against Angel City. I mean, you got that West Coast kind of thing going on. You don't want to lose to L.A., and they came back. This was a big three points. You hadn't really gotten those three points on the road yet. It was pretty, pretty big. Mm-hmm. It was pretty enjoyable to watch as well. Uh, less enjoyable that we get to the injury report here. Uh, Jill, that match report against Angel City, excuse me, uh, out where Bethany Balser with an injury. I mean, illness. Excuse me, an illness. Uh, she will not be available for the Louisville match tomorrow on mm-hmm. Tuesday. And Megan Rapino serving her red card suspension for the last time that the rain played. Uh, so Megan should be back for the next match. Uh, Bethany didn't really get word even from the press conference this morning about it. So hoping that she's better sooner rather than later. In team related news on the 28th, Lauren Barnes was selected as the Reigns finalist for the inaugural Ally Award. Uh, Ally sponsoring an award uh, which recognizes the athlete that embodied the idea of the word teammate most supporting and motivating rookies and veterans alike. Uh, each finalist was nominated by their teammates, too. So, um, I mean, just if you follow the rain and you know who Lauren Barnes is and just who she's been to the rain as a club, it makes the most sense. Uh, Barnes is a great interview, great person to speak with, and just all around a, a solid human being. So this makes absolute sense to me. Um on the 29th, the club extended Ryan Brown and loaned both both, both Brown <laughs> and Alyssa Melanson to the same club. Uh, Ryan Brown signed a long-term contract deal to 2023 following her successful period as a national team replacement player. Subsequent to her extension, Brown was loaned to FC Nordsjælland. That's the Danish Women's League. I apologize if I but, uh, <laughs> botched that to further her opportunity to develop. So it's basically saying, hey, we don't necessarily have the opportunity right now for you on the club. We want you to go to this club and go and develop more, yeah. and we'll come on back. Makes sense. Um, Alyssa Melanson was also <laughs> loaned to the same club. Uh, on the first, earlier today, the Rain and the Sounders both announced that there will be another single-ticket doubleheader during the 2023 season. I know that there have been and there will be several opportunities uh, this year where the Rain and the Sounders will play on the same day, but they're not the single-ticket doubleheader that happened last year against uh, Portland. So... Uh, the date and the time for this doubleheader next, uh, the 2023 season, are to be determined still. A quote from the Rain Media email, the doubleheader, which provides soccer fans in the Puget Sound the unique opportunity to see both their women and men's top flight professional teams play at the same venue on the same date and back-to-back game day action is scheduled for next season with date and opponent yet to be determined, though scheduling will center on marquee matches. Mm-hmm. So it's exciting to know. I know that since then, since the doubleheader, obviously the rain now call Lumen Field a permanent home. They're seeing their attendance improve each sheet, sheet, sheets all the time. So it's just you're hoping to see that with these things that more people are encouraged to go out to these yeah, matches, encouraged sure. to support the women's game. Uh, and I just remember being at that doubleheader, and it was a big deal. So um excited to see when that is but obviously that's next season 
Also today, the team traded the discovery rights to Ford Wang Shuang. Uh, Durain received $30,000 in allocation money and a fourth round pick in next year's draft. Uh, while racing Louisville received discovery rights to Ford Wang uh, Shuang. So uh, more allocation money, more draft picks, always nice. Um, what that means for the time being, I don't know, but <laughs> that's what the rain uh, did earlier today. In league-related news, on the 25th, uh, Hope Sola, former Husky, Washington Husky, former rain player, former U.S. Women's National Team player, pled guilty to driving while impaired. She was found passed out behind the wheel back in March with her two kids in the car. Uh, so she pled guilty. I know that she's in rehab, um, just hoping for the betterment of that. On the 29th, uh, North Carolina Courage's Jalen Daniels uh, missed a match versus the Washington Spirit after refusing to wear a Pride-themed mm. jersey. And this gained flack from all over the league, and as it should. That's mm -hmm. just all right, ridiculous. And the fact that uh, someone that has that kind of view is in the league is kind of disappointing. I know that when she was signed by the Courage, this garnered um, attention because she's done things like this in the past. So yeah. to have brought her back is its own thing. With that being said, we look ahead for our reign here, who sit at a five-win, three-loss, five-draw record. They are fifth in the NWSL with 20 points on the season. Looking ahead, they play August 2nd to, uh, tomorrow at Racing Louisville on the road. It's a 5 p.m. kickoff. And then August 7th back at home for the first time in quite a bit versus the Houston Dash for the first time on the season, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe it's the first time they've matched up against Houston uh, with a 3 p.m. Uh, start time. So 